Good morning, card communities. RJ back with another video, so let's get to it. Today's random Mike Schmidt item of the day from 1984 the Topps All Star card. Topps put out these All Star cards and a lot of their products over the years. Usually, the, these represented the starting players at their positions in the All Star game the previous season. Bunch of uh, boring, <laughs> typical stats on the back information. Personal data mentions he was the MVP of the 80 World Series and won back-to-back -back MVPs in 80 and 81. It's a random Mike Schmidt out of the day, the 1984 Topps All-Star card. Today's random <coughs> baseball item of the day. Interesting thing that happened to me the other day. Uh, I was pulling out of my pulling into my driveway, and my neighbor was pulling out of his, and he backed up uh, next to my driveway, waiting for me to get out of the car. Which I saw, car, which I saw, got up and said, "Hey, what's up?" He goes, "Hey, um, how about I come by and look at your cards later?" Because interestingly, I had posted a Facebook post, and I still have it up right now, uh, Facebook Marketplace post trying to sell a bunch of the extras of my set. A lot of stuff I'm getting rid of. Um, haven't been successful in selling it, but it's still up there on Facebook Marketplace. He saw it, mentioned it to me. Hey, I saw you, you, you have cards, you're collecting cards. And he mentioned he did as well. So we said we should take a moment to check out each other's collection we never had before. And the other day he stopped me and said, come over and look at my cards. And I said, great. And I'll bring you over to look at my cards too. So I actually sold him a card that I, because he was a red, he's a Red Sox fan. So I got a, uh, I had a card I knew he would be very interested in. I absolutely um, sent it, you know, showed it to talk to him. He said, "Oh, I want that card." I said, "Well," he said, "How much?" And I said, "Really?" He goes, "Yeah." And I said, "It was this much." And he said, "Fine." He Venmoed me the money right then. I went over to his house, saw all the things. He really didn't have anything that fit, but he, he had a stash of certain type of cards I'm going to show off. And he said, basically, would you like any of these? I'm trying, I'm, I'm, you know, I'll give them to you. So what I'm talking about is this card right here. It is a, uh, what is called a Jersey Fusion card. It is not issued by any of the major manufacturers. What you see in here is a um, 2012, I believe, Panini Cooperstown card of Walter Alston. Okay, what it is, Jersey Fusion is a company that would buy up a bunch of old cards of Hall of Famers. Okay, they would buy them up. And since they're not producing them, all they would do is encase them in a slab like that and then get a game-used piece of jersey for that particular player and put it with the card. You can see right here, it says it's not, um, what does it say... Do, 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 do. Oh, you could find out where the swatch came from if you scan that little code there, okay? But um, they don't have a license to, to do this, but they don't need a license since they're not selling, they're not manufacturing a card. They're selling an old card with a game-used swatch, and the company is called Jersey Fusion. Apparently, they've been doing this for a few years, and again, my friend said he got really into it a couple years ago, let me see if I can't set that down there, lay it here. He said he got really into it a few years ago and bought up tons of them. And then suddenly it no longer appealed to him and he just doesn't care. And the cards really don't have much value considering what they are. It's just a card of a Hall of Fame player, just some random card that they put you know, into a slab along with a square of a game used jersey. All right, that's all this company does, and you know there's a lot of them up on on the bay right now. If you're interested, you know, welcome to go look. Um, I did not buy any, but I didn't have a Walter Alston swatch, and you know it's it's likely it would be hard to come by a Walter John's Walter Alston swatch. So I thought he was trying to give away dozens of this. He would have probably given me all if he had. He just didn't care about him anymore. I wasn't interested, but the Walter Alston swatch appealed to me. So I thankfully took it, you know, gave him much kudos. Uh, and there you have it. That's my random baseball item of the day. Today's trivia question. Um, in what year 
in World Series play. I'm still doing World Series trivia. The postseason's about to start. Uh, and uh, we'll eventually have the World Series by the end of the month. So I said, I will say to you, in what year did the World Series occur between two teams in the same geographical region? So, for example, uh, the two Chicago teams, the two New York teams, the two um, uh, L.A. teams, San Francisco and Oakland, you know, um, Possibly the only other geographical closeness that's realistic would be Baltimore and Washington. But what was the last year in which the World Series occurred between two teams located in the same geographical region? That's your question. Uh, what you're playing for? Card here from I think this is twenty. Oh gosh, it's an archives card from like 2019. It is a uh, Evan Longoria card. And it's serial number to 175. So Evan Longoria, whether or not he will be in the Hall of Fame, I doubt it. He suffered from a number of injuries over the years. And although he was a big rookie of the year, had a great year in his rookie year, great time with the Mariners, uh, he succumbed to injuries later in his career and was never as productive again. But that's the card you're playing for. So if you want to win that card, send me the correct, send me an email with the correct answer. We will, uh, you know, You'll have today and tomorrow to send in the emails. I'll include my email in the description below along with the repeated question. You'll have today and tomorrow to answer. We will pick a winner on Sunday, all right? Good luck to everybody on that. So if you saw Sunday's trivia recap, one of the things I said is uh, I recently got a, a big uh, return of uh, graded cards from my broker over at Nash Cards. I got a big return. And I'm going to go through pieces of that return every day this week. Small snippets. Uh, Friday's going to be a big one, but I'm going to start with small snippets today. So uh, the first one is, I showed off this a little while ago. I'm trying to collect every card of a man named Tony Barron. Tony Barron played one season for the Phillies back in 1997 um, <clears throat> and never played MLB ball again after that. But he was a Great guy that year, very big fan favorite for the brief period he, he did play. Uh, was a coach for the Phillies later on in his career. Uh, don't know what he's doing now. There are a total of 17 cards, 17 total, that are um, in his, that he has that are actual baseball cards, minor league or majors. Uh, I'm trying to collect all 17. One of them is this 1992 Fleer Pro Cards card of him with the Albuquerque Dukes. Now, I couldn't find a loose one, but I did found, find a team set. So I got the team set and when I did it, I looked on the back and it turned out, or not, not the back, but the set included some a couple really big name Hall of Famers in their minor league days. So I figured I'd get this, once I got the set, I pulled Tony Barron out. The other guys are just loose, but I figured I'd get those uh, Hall of Fame guys slabbed and I did. So I'm going to show them off right now. So one of those big name Hall of Famers was a man named Pedro Martinez. Got that in a nine. Came back pretty in a nine. Cool. Pedro Martinez. M uh, PSA nine minor league card with the Albuquerque Dukes. And again, the only reason I got this card was because I got that Toby Barron. And I figured I'd give it, you know, take, throw it in, get it slabbed. Don't want to leave it loose, lying around, see what it got. There you go. The other Hall of Famer, big name Hall of Famer, everybody knows, Mr. Mike Piazza. Still in the minor leagues with the Albuquerque Dukes, also a PSA 9. So, along with Tony Barron, I got two Hall of Fame PSA 9 cards after slabbing. So, there you go. Cool little return on my, my PSA. I don't even know if these cards are worth the twenty dollars it took me to slab them, but I just you know felt like slabbing them up. Always good to have a few oddball slabs in your collection, I think. So anyway, that's all I have for you today. Something's quick and dirty. Uh, if you like that, please consider like, subscribing, commenting, all that jazz. I really do appreciate your support as I try my best for everybody else in this great card community. All right, uh, we got more content for you on Wednesday and Friday. Come back for that. All right. Appreciate you all watching. Hope to see you again soon. Take care.